Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so Charles Dow, 1900s, talked about the Dow theory. I don't think he ever called it the Dow theory as such, but these were the kind of things that he said and theorized about the market, specifically the Dow. Okay, so number one, the market discounts everything. So his view was that everything is already baked into the market, whether it's going to be earnings on stocks, whether it's going to be interest rate rise, whether it's going to be poor performance in factory orders, whatever it may be, it's already baked in. That was his theory behind it. He believed that everything was already in the chart. You could already see it and and there was going to be nothing surpri nothing surprises about it. Uh, does that still stand true today? Who knows? A lot of the time you do see that. You see the market pushes on and then there's an interest rate rise and it's all expected and the market does nothing. It's when you get unusual surprises, but I think generally that's not a bad thing to look at. And number two, the markets have three trends, primary, secondary, and minor. So the primary is the yearly kind of bigger trend, the big meaty trend behind everything. Secondary is a kind of, if you can think about it in months almost, like a, a monthly trend that's maybe going in the same direction or against it. And then you've got the minor, which is a few weeks. So these three off can often go in sync, but they can often move out of sync, which presents trading opportunities. But the idea is to look at the market in terms of the three trends. So for us as traders, that might be, hey, let's look at the weekly trend, a weekly chart. Uh, to, or a daily chart if we want to, if we can squeeze enough in to see the primary trend secondary maybe we're going to use a daily in fact let's go with that let's go to the weekly chart for the primary secondary we can use the daily so we can see multiple months or maybe we can use something like a uh, 120 minutes something like that if we can squeeze enough data in and the minor is going to be in a multiple weeks so we're going to go down to maybe a 60 minute chart on that and zoom everything in so the idea is as we probably do day to day and you do and i do is that multi-time frame analysis but he just defines it as three kind of things the primary and the secondary the minor and the opportunities to present themselves and you've got to consider the biggest weighting is from the primary because if he believes the primary is the biggest thing that's the one that's going to actually ultimately win over everything and so these opportunities when the minor and the secondary are going against the primary could result in a decent opportunity to get on board the bigger primary trend. All right, number three, guys, the market trends have three phases, accumulation, participation, distribution. So this is kind of really, we use this now from day to day still. You have the accumulation phase, the start of a trend where people are buying into a stock. I'm talking from a buy perspective, we could flip on its head from a short perspective, buying into a stock or a market, believing that this is good value now, you see some money coming in, it still doesn't kind of start to move yet. It's still accumulation at the bottom where there's still some sellers in there but buyers are now starting to stop this selling they're buying some stuff accumulating some stock accumulate some futures contracts whatever it may be then we start to start pushing up and that's when you get the kind of public participation phase so everyone starts to pile in it starts to look good starts to be in the media every single person starts to get involved in it the trend starts ripping to highs and off we go now we get the distribution phase and that's where public and less informed traders investors are still buying the thing but the guys who have accumulated at lows are now scaling off into highs, they're, they're throwing some out. You might get a bit of a blow off top here, you might get a bit of a thing, and actually, Take a look at the cryptocurrencies for a perfect example of this accumulation, participation, and distribution quite type chart. You get that thing, we get that blow off top. Everyone's still crazy about it, but often the guys who, are, who understand how these market conditions work are drip feeding off stock or whatever it may be, assets into that extreme euphoria. So number four, averages must confirm each other. This is not moving averages, guys. This is the Dow Jones averages. So you've got the transport index, Dow Jones industrial average, whatever else is looking at. Now, this is obviously related to back then when economies were run on railroads and what have you now obviously now we still need goods that have to be transported across the country and railroad roads in the us is is one of the major ways of doing it but obviously now with online and digital that changes economies a bit some of our biggest valuable companies in the world are digital companies so does that still apply now? Doesn't matter. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this is what he would suggest. He'd say, hey, when the transport was at a new high, the Dow Jones Industrial Average have to be at a new high. He didn't say necessarily they have to move in sync, but when there's a new high, they both have to agree with each other and be both going to a new 52-week high, whatever it is, or new low. So that was where he was coming from with that. Number five, number five, sorry. 
Volume must confirm the trend. So he always thought the volume was a secondary indicator and most of us agree with that. So when you've got a good strong trend, the volume is gonna pick up with the trend as more participants come in, more momentum comes in. And as it starts to die off a little bit, volume will fall. So volume is there and it confirms the trend. What you don't want is a trend to be ripping up to highs and volume just to fall, 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 because he would, he would suggest that that actually is not really conducive to a strong trend. Strong trend good move good volume final one a trend will continue until an opposite force is applied so pretty much like the law of nature if we have a movement in one thing it's going to continue in that movement until we've got opposite force is applied so his theory was hey if the market is trending if nothing else changes i.e we don't have anything happening to it increasingly bullish we don't need increasingly bullish news it will still trend so the fallacy i think that most people think about is that hey for a trend to keep going we have to keep having bullish news bullish news bullish news no dow dow postulated that actually once it was rolling unless you had negative news to stop it and reverse it, that thing would keep going. I don't know about you, but I've seen that on intraday basis many times before where it's been a good trending day. Nothing really has come out. It's been very, very quiet, but the thing's just plodded on and on. Even on a daily chart, you see this with stocks as well. You know, stocks that just keep moving and moving and moving. Not necessarily massively bullish news coming out. Their earnings are okay. Everything seems fine. But because it's trending, because it's people are just accumulating, you've got people buying the stock. It's just chugging along. Unless they have a real negative catalyst at some point, point it just drifts up and up and up and up and up so those are the six principles of the Dow theory and many of them do apply today some of them perhaps not so much but interesting always like to study some of the greats from years gone by anyway guys if you like this kind of stuff get a thumbs up take care see you in the next one bye bye